So what's uh, what's your guys' relationship with running? <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Uh, don't care for it. No, but was there a time where you had to? Oh, sure, sure. Foot, uh, really? Sports. Yeah, I mean, foot football practice would make you do laps all the time. Uh, I mean, I mean, like in a scenario. Are you talking about like where I had to like run for my life? No, but maybe, maybe. <laughs> Wait, um, I know. Oh, good, Paul. You got. It. I want to hear you, Paul. You probably ran a lot more than I have. What's your? I will your also story? take a story about legs. If you, <laughs> I could give you a <laughs> lot of legs stories about in legs. general. Yeah, I could give you many leg stories. Tell me what. Tell me about Paul's legs. Tell me about yeah. Paul's sinewy legs. I hated running as a child. I was terrible when the mile came. I would fear the mile, the presidential yeah. fitness test. I yeah. feared that for. I I swear to God, I feared it all year long. I it was like no. a, it was like a a deep like I would be Christmas morning f- opening my gifts and go fuck the presidential <laughs> fitness run is coming up in six months. And also, the president never ran that day, right? What, like, shouldn't that what be a is, thing where he's like, watch me on TV run a mile? I don't even know what that is. Did you not I'm have that? Honest. You had to have no. That. You didn't do the presidential fitness program. No, not at all. But you're the birthplace of democracy and fitness. No, we did tests. We did the we did the MCAS and we did all the fucking standardized tests. We never had to prove we were fit. I did yoga in high school. What? I never ran for shit. I did ultimate frisbee. Are you telling oh, me you didn't have to live up to the president's fitness level? Never, yeah. never. Not once. one of our not one of our damn presidents could run a good mile. I swear. No. To God. Well, I mean, didn't didn't wasn't that Bill's whole thing? Right? Wasn't he like I'd go jog? He go jogging by McDonald's? Like wasn't that like the stereotype? They did it before that. Well, sure, yeah. But at least at least listen, Clinton. Many things wrong with him, but <laughs> boy, could he jog? Boy, could he jog? He could. I hated that. Uh, I, and because of that, I've never liked running. I I actually pr- much prefer many other. Aerobic wow. activities. I'll I will jump rope all day. I'll ride a I'll ride a dang yeah. I'll ride a dang bike for hours. Love a bike. Love for a sure. bike. One hundred percent. Easier on the knees, says I. Oh, definitely easier on the knees. I'll even freaking ride the rowing machine, and I'll what? which will make you oh, vomit. Sure. You'll vomit the easiest you've ever vomited in your entire life by by it's doing true. a rowing it's all, machine. It's all that core. It's all that oh, core. God, it'll uh, strength. Dest- it'll destroy I, you. I think running. Is probably listen. If any of you listening to this are runners, that's great. I'm really happy for you. I, I, it sounds like runners high. It's not is for as me. As good as cocaine. Yeah. Uh, the way people talk about it. Uh, no. I think my entire life I had like back injuries from sports where running would cause like the discs to just slam into each other, and I was like, I don't like this. This hurts. This isn't even like me not having the 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 lung capacity or stamina to run. My back hurts. I don't like this. Yeah, not a desirable <laughs> exercise. Why do you ask? Well, I ask because uh, the book we will be. Uh, oh, that's right. The adventure that we will be reading is called Track Star! Exclamation <laughs> point. Oh, I thought this was going to be like a model art, model car thing. Like you know those like ones you buy and the and the RC cars you have to pull the trigger to make the car go faster. Yeah, gu- gu- track. they're called gun cars, Chad. Yes, gun cars. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, also, how more race cars should be controlled by just like a gun. Um, I thought it was <laughs> then you you would enjoy the Super Mario Brothers movie starring John Leguizamo. Oh my god, and Bob Hoskins. Do they start the cars with guns? Every all technology in that universe is uh, NES light gun based. I remember they're like uh, when they get arrested, they're like um, court. Yeah, what do you call it. Yeah, they're yeah. They, uh, they take photo. their picture with with guns. Yeah, like with guns. So fucking funny. What but a cool. It, yeah. What a cool gag. And the the cop car they're in is controlled via gun. Is it really? Yes. Yeah. Cool. Cool. It's a good bad movie. <laughs> Like if I could start a car by putting my like if I want to get into my my Jeep Grand Cherokee, and the only way to start it. <laughs> Is putting my Jeep Grand Cherokee branded uh, pistol into where the key ignition would be, oh, and I have to go sick. click, click, boom, oh, and turn sick. it like a Boondock Saint and pull the trigger. How cool would that be? If everything there? could be Persona Three gun yeah. tech, uh, was it only Persona yeah. Three or that all f- no, four, four and five I also think have three that? Is, uh, I think Three is the only one where they shoot themselves in the head with guns. If all so if all tech could could take a little note from that and it was like a cool gun based start, oh, that would be so much yeah. fun. That maybe America would be a little safer of a place. I'd yeah. love it if if things were so much stuff took influence from gun design that guns themselves felt the need to distance themselves and reinvent their own brand. 
Remember in Final Fantasy when he had that gun blade? It was like, a yeah. sword's not enough. I want a gun that I have to fire while I swing. How cool is that? But it doesn't actually shoot bullets, Chad. Did you know this? Oh, what, is what? This? are you talking about? It doesn't shoot bullets. Uh, it Why? merely vibrates the sword when you pull the trigger. Oh. There's no actual There's no actual barrel on, this, on the sword. It's I thought just, the whole point of that thing was that you were like, while you're slashing some guy, you're like, and you get shot. Boom. <laughs> yeah. The finisher. But it's never... They, if you recall, they had to hire a sniper from another, uh, like, fight school. Because we all know the plot of Final Fantasy VIII. I never never actually played VIII. (laughs) We all know the plot of Final Fantasy VIII, which is very simple. (laughs) I know there was fireworks at some point. There was fireworks. So basically, they're vibroblades from Star Wars. Yes, they're vibroblades from Star Wars, but only for a little bit. Here's, Here's the less aggressive version of it. In Devil May Cry, Nero has a sword... With like a motorcycle rev on the handle, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so like while it's in his back, he can like rev it so it starts burning in flames. That's pretty cool. But That's now it. we're talking about m- integrating motorcycle technology into things, which I'm also yeah. here for. But, but we're not. What is the motorcycle if not the gun of cars? <laughs> what would the, what I would that not, make? I will not explain that. I'm sorry. Yeah, yes, yeah, okay, that was yeah. rude of me. I'm usually to ask. pretty good at anal- analogies, but I I don't know if I could follow that one. He's right though. It. I I agree with the spirit of my co-host's argument that motorcycles are the guns of cars. Didn't care for running. I think. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm curious if you guys had this. I had friends in the cross country group. Cross country was like a cult. I don't yeah. know what it was. Like obviously all sports teams stick together, but cross country kids were like. What are you, are you guys like running into the woods and killing someone? Like, what are you doing? I think that, that you guys so like it's that high. It's that high, and I think the only there is like a clear delineation between the long distance runner and the sprinter. There's a, you want to see the clearest delineation of two types of bodies. Yeah. Look at those two people next to each other. A Olympian yeah. distance runner and an Olympian sprinter is like they do two. They do two different sports, but it's like. One looks like they're dying, and one looks like they're the yeah. mo- they're the healthiest person that's ever lived. And uh, I think they're they're mu- like there's like a just a a, a, a a certain type of brain that wants that long distance run. I don't I don't know what it is. It's like you're chase like literally like chasing something, and uh, it has to be just like meditative. It's like I it's, I just think that, like something goes something happens in the like whatever you're running what. I don't know, is it 10, 20 miles? I don't even know. But, like, you start... You ever gone to Cross Country, Matt? Like, they start no. in, like, by the school. Yes, actually, yeah. And then they have to run into, like, the wilderness or the woods or unmarked areas, which just feels very, like, unofficial. <laughs> Something's happening in the middle part of that rut. Maybe right? we're, like, like... Maybe we all... Maybe all of us in America... Maybe all of us around the world or where they participate in Cross Country sports uh, have actually gone to Buffy-style... Uh, hell, hellmouth schools, and that yeah. is where yeah, they, yeah, yeah. they. That is actually where they go to do when they go to do their fighting. Is they do yeah. they, jo- they yeah. join cross yeah, country, yeah, yeah, yeah. and maybe that's also why they're so emaciated looking. Maybe their souls are very souls are being sucked from their bodies. I think they them. run. Yeah, I think they start running, and by mile nine, like uh, a witch comes down on her broom and goes like, "Give me, give me your youth," and she like drains drains it out of them no it it would it would appear to be the youth chad and i can see why you made that mistake but it is in fact the cartilage in their knees that the witch yeah, requires sure, sure. for her no, no, spells no, no, no. She, yeah she chews on like as they're running like a little <laughs> mosquito she like gnaws on their knees and they'll their never know <laughs> yeah and then and it, it somehow it kind of feels good it's like when a leech takes away your blood it's not good for you but it feels good yeah yeah she, yeah Blood's leaving what? your head. What? What? I think. What? I think leeching is good for you. It's like when a. It's like when a <laughs> leech takes away your blood and it feels good. What? It's nothing. When you lose blood, it it accidentally feels good. That's why like people did bloodletting because they didn't know any better, and they're like, yeah, it feels kind of good when I let like let it. It is good for you. Blood. It actually is good for you. Is that why? Is the, uh, well, well, Paul. It's good for Paul. Paul. <laughs> Paul needs Paul less blood. Is Paul, Paul's in the medieval level still of like? Well, if you take away all the bad blood, the good blood will come in. You're good. Paul's actually what we call a ninth level hyper sanguine, mm-hmm. where he. Just has so much blood that it replaces all his other fluids. Listen, the foul humors in my body need to be exterminated somehow. Okay. Yeah. The foul yeah. and fetid humors that reside within my body need to be need to be exited swiftly every day with wearing my bloodletting. What can I say? God, there is such a world of darkness, uh, Promethean explanation for what Paul is d- describing right now, and I really want to get into it, but it would make this preamble at least thirty minutes longer. I think what we're hitting is is that running 
is an awful, awful activity that does have sort of a, uh, it's sort of a blood ritual in a way, right? You're like sort of putting a, a harm on your body to yeah. excel. Um, well, that would that literally accelerate, yes. Yeah. And that is, uh, that's capitalism, you know? It's just, uh, it's just making you run, you know? Don't care for it. The treadmill of, of progress. Yeah. My, my least favorite part of running is how a, a giant hand will emerge from the back of your head. What when does you that run a reference lot. to? What is that? That's a reference to the cover of this book. <laughs> oh, sorry, I hadn't seen the cover. Yeah, no, <laughs> like, the cover of this sure book. Who's... The cover of this book is. Uh, oh my god, there, there is a head coming out of her ponytail. Uh, yeah. The cover of this book is a what is a uh, a Nintendo Entertainment System video game cover. Yeah. Why is she accepting? Why is her head hand accepting uh, AK forty seven bullets? I'm aff- okay. So you need to you need to go down to page four of the PDF to see the clear uh, view of this oh, cover. Okay, page yeah. four of the legal book that we have. the legal book that we have. You need to go to page four to see the, uh, the, the you know, the black and white. It's a little easier to see it oh. in black and white. Uh, okay. hold, why hold, is on, she, hold on, hold on. Why is she accepting AK-47 bullets <laughs> with condoms? Why is she them? accepting two, hold on. two glass stink bombs uh, <laughs> that she bought, that someone bought off of Amazon.ca? Why is she UK? accepting T-Virus? Why is she accepting T-Virus hold from Umbrella cor- Corporation? Hold on. Two things. One, send me a li- send me a link to this book that I have so I can rip Yeah, let me you. send you a link to this book that you legally own, Chad. Two, welcome to Goosebuds, uh, the podcast covering the best in the 90s YA horror and adventure series, uh, usually covering the works of R.L. Stein. Sometimes we cover other adventure books. I am your host, Chad, co-host. I'm Paul. And I'm your co-host, host, Kevin Cole. The co-host I, with the most. Whoa. And I don't want to fully spoil this book for you, but I, I have already had it spoiled for me. Whoa. Uh, what do you mean? A little bit. A little bit. A friend of the show, uh, George from Best Little Horror House, uh, he provided this book to us. Uh, he also told me about this book because he did it on a live stream that he ran. And uh, this book is a is called Track Star by R.A. Montgomery, famously uh, known for inventing the Choose Your Own Adventure book. Uh, no. This book, just like the shark book, just, this is the same author. Wait, as that's the, shark the same. Book. Ro- I thought. His, okay, yeah, it's the same guy. Okay. Same guy. Nope. Uh, this is the uh, book about track running, but apparently there is a very heavy doping element to this. Yeah, and there's there's some stuff that's going to come up that's going to be pretty fun. I think. I think you should have just stumbled into that dope. Like I think, as as most most young youths do, you don't realize it's coming. But I think it. I think it dope. comes on fast and quick in this one. I'm, I'm- I'm seeing some flags already in the about the author segment, which traditionally is at the end of the book. But Mr. Montgomery seems to want to put his at the very beginning. And his first thing, here's the great thing about it. This is a, he's a runner. Uh, R.A. Montgomery's a confirmed runner. R.A. Montgomery has hiked in the Himalayas. First thing. Yeah. Is a brag about the cool mountains that R.A. Montgomery has climbed. Yeah, whatever. I mean, I'm looking at a photo of him. This dude looks like Brian Blessed, not a guy I would consider a runner. Ah, but I love Brian Blessed. I love Brian Blessed. He was boss nasty. He does that. You know what I got to say? Climb this, R.A. Whoa. (laughs) And he doesn't know what he's being told to climb, but he can imagine it. He's a writer. (laughs) I'm sure he can think of something real good. So R.A. Montgomery really like, and yeah, we've done his previous book on the episode on the show about being a shark, even though we never got to be a shark. You are I'm a looking shark. at his other books. There's uh, Space and Beyond, something called Punishment, Colon Earth, all these big adventure sci-fi novels. And then some of them are just behind the wheel. So I guess just like having a car or this one, okay. like a track star. Really, he's given you all genres of life. I'm sorry. Um, I know that. It's been said that podcasters cannot lie, that they can only tell the truth. I was mm. wrong. Edward Packard, uh, also a, he wrote You Are a Shark, uh, also the inventor of the uh, Choose Your Own Adventure. I, R.A. <laughs> Montgomery wrote the second uh, uh, Choose Your Own Adventure. So, uh, so we uh, just spent this whole re- beginning part slandering a man who hasn't done us I knew yet. it didn't feel right. Wait, so he wrote the second book? He wrote the second Choose Your Own Adventure. So he was a, a major player. Uh, but now my uh, my my demand that he you're st- you're my, stunned by how much you've boot yeah well up my demand that book. he climbed this still stands and I feel a little bit better about it because he's not quite the icon that I thought he was yeah wait was the timeline that the original guy Packard yeah he wrote one and then like 
he didn't do any more. He's like, well, this was a this was a wash. No, that same year, uh, R.A. Montgomery and Douglas Terman also released two Choose Your Own Adventures. So they were working in in tandem. It appears they were piggybacking across uh, the the annals of publication history to release Choose Your Own Adventures uh, year after year for many. Did many all years. of these guys like all work at the same cafe or something? Like, do they all like have the same idea and then kind of race each They're other? They're probably the a bunch of nerds who played D and D together, and they were like, "Well, we could just make books out of this crap, and then you know." <laughs> Make some yeah, money. in between climbing the Himalayas and doing <laughs> and scuba diving and in Central quote, America, working in Africa. Yeah, worked in Africa. What does that even mean? Yeah, I could go. Well, up. that means that means diamond mining in Africa. Probably right? like, something bad. Damn. So I've always, I guess, I've always wanted to be a track star, and now I have a book to pretend I could be a track star. Now, listen, I'm normally when we do these adventure style books, yeah, uh, we divide the brain into two parts but mm. everyone knows the brain is not what the track star needs mm. okay <laughs> track star needs legs two so legs will be the left leg and the right leg okay can we can the left leg and the right leg still want different things yes absolutely the, the, they naturally do okay i'm a desirous leg still okay good yeah yeah, yeah. you're but a what leg i'm a, a desirous de- leg. i'm a desire leg full of desire uh yeah. my oh. desire is to uh to run faster than the left leg even if it throws us off kilter <laughs> What hu- what hu- what hubris! <laughs> so not just fast, but faster than the, the faster team you're part faster of. than the the absolutely essential member to me being fast. We'll see how this works out. My desire is for the race to be over and go to Arby's because I love <laughs> okay. a big beef and cheddar after a race. I so. <laughs> actually think that these are two pretty synchronized desires. <laughs> yeah, as long I can- as I know where an Arby's is. Like or at the end of the you know end of this track is an Arby's. I think I'm gonna be keeping up with you both. As long as you run quickly, but not as quickly as me, uh, I think we'll be okay. Well, I mean, sure, but at the end of every at the end of every road is an Arby's. <laughs> if you think about it, damn, that's true. Well, you are a speed demon, okay, and close. Hey. To being a world class athlete, you have three lives. Is that all? The, is is that what you're sure, trying? Sure, we have three. We have three injuries we can take before our career is over. <laughs> three. Yeah. Ha- we have three hammies to pull. That's can two I just, more. Two more than most, Chad. Can I also just say, like, hey, listen, this book promises be a track star. Name a track star. Th- I mean, this this just says track star exclamation point. It does not say sure. be a track star. It doesn't say you are a track star. It just says track star. Track star. Maybe you'll see one, Chad. Usain Bolt, the, one of the most famous. Yeah, that's the only. Uh, name another one. Ah, okay. Fast Jeffrey. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Sanu. Speed Lady. Gary Sanu, the actor. <laughs> um, Baron von Steps. Ring a bell. Oh, jo- you know, I do remember. I I remember yeah. he. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Baron from von the Steps. Transylvanian track. Dominique track Exploso. <laughs> <laughs> all famous uh le- leg doers shuffles shuffles mcquick steps <laughs> oh my god shuffles mcquick steps like what a career yeah. what a career what a career i think no usain bolt an amazing man an amazing athlete how much of his marketing is the fact that he has bolt in his last name it is right? sick like, it is a perfect. really sick last name he's very fast though he's fast no, he's than very his last fast name. i just i i my, the point i'm trying to make the cynical point i'm trying to make mm. okay is that i don't think we as a society really pay that much attention to track stars off um, the playground no yeah no or just i mean the olympics i i couldn't tell you who won any of the last ones i know there's that like sherry richardson who only reason I know her is because she got banned for having weed mm. at the Olympics last time, mm. and now she's back. I That's just, like the only one I know. Well, you're you're making a great point. I do have to say, Kevin, you made me real. Remember, you said off of the playground. Do you remember when speed was the currency of cool? Yeah, yeah. that's your favorite. That's your favorite thing. Sonic the Hedgehog. Well, Sonic the Hedgehog <laughs> is Chad's favorite thing, and I'm surprised he badmouthed runners for the past. Well, 20 he's minutes. not a track star. Yes, he, he is. He has games is, in which he is only a track star. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't even know what they're doing with those Mario and Sonic Olympic Games ones where they're like, what, is Sonic holding back? Like, is he not? I mean, Mario's pretty fast. He's not that fast. Sometimes he is faster than I Sonic, think, according what, to Mario and Sonic of the Olympic Games. Th- that Exactly. The, like, the fact that anyone can beat Sonic, you have to either say that, like, Sonic is, like, holding back for the sake of sport, right? He's, like, doing, like, Dash from the Incredibles where he's, like, kind of trying mm-hmm. to stay competitive. Mm-hmm. Or 
He's got like Goku weighted clothes on. No, no, no. Not. He he drinks the the Black Panther drink before uh, every, <laughs> every um, oh he Olympic takes games. the anti black lo- flower thing. Yeah, he takes away his yeah his speed. He, he takes it, the yeah. bad sippy before he does it, yeah. just to prove that he's still a fast mouse. Okay, yeah. Uh, no, speed. Uh, to your point, Paul. I do remember when being fast was the coolest thing in the world. It was the, it was the only thing that made you cool. You did not have to have personality, looks, money, anything. If you could simply run the fastest out of the group of, I don't know, 30 boys you were running with, you were yeah. the king. This is just boy law. This is, I don't know about how that it works with boy. girls. I would, I would assume it would transfer across the, the genders. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm curious. We're talking about our own experiences, Chad. Yeah, and I knew boys, and I knew not being fast, and the fast boys were cooler than me. Yeah. Oh, I was also not fast. Me too. Uh, I looked like way- I looked yeah. like I should be fast, which was an even bigger problem. You know, I was like a little. I was like I was like I was like bred for speed. I looked like a long distance runner. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you had the makings of a varsity athlete. Yeah, <laughs> couldn't. I just couldn't do it. What changed? What changed in our age where we were like now money matters and not speed. Probably all the stuff that money can buy and speed can't. <laughs> Maybe if theft was legal more. Like if you could do more Aladdin, like run, you know, run away with a loaf of bread. And that was more acceptable in our society. Maybe speed would come back. We can all run if we have to run for fear. Yeah. For the sake yeah. of well, fear. That's prob- yeah. That's probably where it's coming from. Right. The reason why we think it's cool is like our monkey brains are like, well, this person can run away from the cheetahs. Yeah. Faster. They will live. They will live. You are a <laughs> I, was <waiting laughs> demon. I was waiting for it. I was waiting for it. Thank you. Here's B Demon and close to being a world class wow. athlete. Cool. Neat. The 60, the 100, and the 200 meter relays are your events. I got all numbers. You beat almost everybody in your local, regional, and state championships, except Gail Forbes. Forbes is just a fraction of a second ahead of you in most races. Oh yeah, and don't forget Antonio Helios, another oh, son. Oh my god! Of, okay, well, son of the sun god, the god of the su- the sun god. It's not. Our, it's not. You know, like it's not fair that one. Uh, the Forbes fortune has trained Gale since she was a baby. You know, yeah. they've been putting her on a treadmill <laughs> since she was a tiny baby, and then the sun god who literally mi- chariots the sun around our earth. Also, you are, hmm. you are up against Apollo himself and someone who's been raised on gasoline and cocaine their entire <laughs> life. Someone who who has who forged and sold the chariot to Apollo, <laughs> yeah, and made a pretty penny off of it. Next year is your senior year in high school. College scholarships and even sponsorships are up for grabs. This is the big time. Your parents can't afford college, so it's Mm. now or never. Mm. Lately, there have been rumors that your rivals, maybe even Gail Forbes, a.k.a. (laughs) Gas and Kane. (laughs) Sorry, what? Gas and Kane. Gas and Kane? Gas and Cocaine, Chad. As I've referenced were her were, were as mother's milk to her <laughs> okay sure she, she mixes them together and shoots it down yeah yeah lately there have been rumors that your rivals are doping with steroids and other performance enhancing drugs strength endurance power all increased by using these substances or so they say they're right with <laughs> the huge health issues connected with these substances is it worth it you hear this that really? These... In, this is really the start of the book. This is the start of the book, Chad. I told oh, you. I told you it wasn't spoiling too much. But like, I, I don't know. I, I kind of thought we'd like turn a corner where it was like a guy going, "Hey, do you want to en- enhance your game?" We're just already talking about drugs in the in sports. <laughs> this ain't no football. Choose your own adventure. That's sad, or whatever that one was called. No, yeah, back to pass. The, the no gun. Back to pass. The gun came in later in the story. <laughs> you have to choose your own downfall in this one. Yeah. <laughs> uh health issues is worth it you learn there uh that these issues can be as simple as overly large muscles leading to torn tendons sounds cool Mm -hmm. but they can also lead to depression suicide or even heart problems later in life like by age 30 later in life like by (laughs) 30 that's a problem for later us after we've gotten all of our endorsement deals from pep boys and stuff 30 seems like a long way away but it's not (laughs) 
<laughs> I like that Pet Boys is going to sponsor us as runners. <laughs> the car yeah. company. Like a like a like a local business that's also part of a chain. We'll I like, like that, like because if they spot, like, are they trying to like? I would think they would be against us because if we can learn to run fast enough, we won't need the cars anymore. No, I mean sure, but they also cynically are not know that the auto industry has a grip hold over this country and there's <laughs> nothing to lose. It's a write off. Yeah, it's not only the health issues. You could lose your right to race for at least two years if you're found positive. For using a banned substance in a doping test. Wow. Performance enhancing substances are banned all over the world by WADA, the World Anti-Doping Agency. WADA. Even chess players are banned from using things that kids with ADD use to help them concentrate. You can just say Is that true? drug. Well, like speed. Yeah, sure. Hey, math, can, yeah. We do, can we detour and how it's weird that there's like multiple projects about that chess player Ch- with a butt plug that's never even true? Yeah, we're we're halfway. We're like half okay, an hour right. in this. We sorry, I'm a, sorry. I'm you sorry. You want to talk Let's about butt plug chess players? That's just like deep issue, man. You they said, didn't even prove that that happened, and now there's like whole chat about, about it. Even Chad, bring that up. Save it for Camp Goosebuds, the bonus save podcast that you, listener, can also <laughs> get by subscribing to our Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, please continue with this harrowing tar- tale of uh, doping. Oh my god! All right, let me see if I can speed us through this. Yeah. No, no, you got this. You got this. You got this. No, he he's saying stories of athletes who have tested positive, ruined careers, lost. Yeah, Sherrod's bad. Uh, <laughs> I heard coaches. Some, yeah, Sherrod's bad. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you have heard that coaches sometimes convince kids to try these kinds of things because it reflects well on the coach to have a winner on the team. You're suspicious of the assistant coach, beautiful Samson. <laughs> He hung around after practice last week. <laughs> you like the coach. Beautiful Samson was once a star himself, but his career ended with two torn Achilles tendons. Even when his injury was better, he never ran well again. I'm glad you read this uh, paragraph and didn't skip it because I love that Samson uh is Beautiful is, Samson. Is, is beautiful sorry, beautiful Samson Samson is a name being used in this. I love that as a Beautiful Samson. That's a you good, gotta say the whole thing. It's good beautiful Samson literary. I love reference. every character named Samson. This is great. <laughs> Hey, you're doing really well, but I noticed you're running out of steam in the 200 meter. (laughs) You okay? He asks, stretching, handing you a nut and fruit energy bar. Just the kind you like because of all the nuts and fruits in it. (laughs) I guess so. It's a tough race, you reply. Both Gale and Helios beat you last week. Not by much. But his name really Helios. Sorry, his name's really Helios. Yeah, his it name's is. Helios. It like is. the end of Deus Ex. <laughs> <laughs> what? Hi, Marvel. What's your diet like, Samson? <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful Samson asks. Oh, uh, the regular stuff that the team recommends: carbs, mostly pasta. The day before the race, and the rest of the time, the mostly pasta. The day before the race, and the rest of the time, fruit, veggies, protein, lots of water, no cow products. What? What? Oh, Why interesting. Why are you attacking America? Well, I guess you don't want like, e- yeah, yeah. I guess you don't want like all of that just like in your system, getting you all phlegmy while you're running. M- milk, milk was a bad choice. <laughs> milk was a bad choice today. There's a picture of beautiful Samson on the next page, and he's looking a little not beautiful. He's not a beautiful. What looking. do you mean? That's a beautiful Sam. Look at him. He's, yeah, he's just trying to give you something. Kind of looks like a fish that turned into a person. Uh, what's your diet like? You know, fruits, nuts, etc. Well, want me to review your food diaries? Says the totally normal man, beautiful Samson. <laughs> <laughs> Show me your poop. Let me see what you're eating. <laughs> anyway, it, do you have anybody going through your poop right now? That's a normal thing for a coach to do. Uh, maybe I can pick out what you need more or less of. You should be winning. <laughs> you might even want to change the Wait. event. Maybe the 400 would suit you. You know that beautiful Samson has worked with many athletes who are surrounded by doping suspicions, including Gail Forbes, Gas and Kane herself. So you ask yourself, <laughs> was that a subtle approach to doping or steroids? No, not even close. None of the things he asked had anything to do with subtly being about doping. You fool, Gail. No, also, I mean, I guess we're assuming drugs are coming into this place. We He just said we're struggling in the 200 so maybe you should do the 400? He asked if we should, if maybe we wanted to change our event, and he also asked if we had a poop guy. That's two simple and innocent questions. Yeah. Do you have a poop guy? If you pursue this, that's very vague. If you pursue this with beautiful <laughs> Samson, 
uh, turn to this page. You don't have to agree to drugs if he offers them. I will. Uh, Gail has been very friendly lately. If you decide to talk with Gail, Gas, and Kane Forbes and bring up the subject of doping, go to this page. If you toy with the idea of asking Antonio Helios what he thinks, go to this huh. page. All right, so here's what Right Leg is thinking. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right Leg, I want to go as fast as possible. Samson, loser. Big loser energy. Yeah. And I don't need a poop. He lost. He broke both his legs. That's stupid. He, lost, he broke both legs, and he. I don't need a poop guy. Uh, <laughs> Helios, um, I don't know about him. Uh, I don't know too much about him. Uh, How can you? He, he's too fast to know. Uh, yeah. Gail, fastest person uh, that I know. Uh, also, potential chance to maybe catch her doing drugs, or if she's not, frame her for doing drugs and get her uh, banned from the Oh, from the I races. like that. Yeah. Smart. Brilliant. Arby's leg. What do you think? <laughs> need some need some meat. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think talking to our other racers for Intel is a good idea. So that's so we're like ruling out beautiful Samson. We're getting bad vibes off. Yeah, of him. I don't like him. Yeah, yeah. He's he's an assistant coach. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you look down on assistant coaches, Chad? As no, Arby's, no. I'm just trying to think about leg? how this. Not that schools have very you know, rigid uh, verification systems for their coaches. Just like, I don't know, just disappointed this school let this guy in. Uh, <laughs> the coach people. Yeah. He, he seems to want to review your diet, whatever that means to you. Yeah. Or him. Maybe he would take me to Arby's. Uh, I, I, go, I, I follow the faster leg right now. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so you want to talk to Gail Forbes, yeah. fast leg? Let's do it. Let's Let's jog on over. Yeah, we don't talk to losers. <laughs> <laughs> Gail Forbes is one of the golden people at school because of all of the gasoline and cocaine she does. You've always... <laughs> in, whoa, whoa. We misgendered Gail. Gail Forbes is a boy in this, but I'm, I am I'm won't misgender what? him. Yeah, I thought I it was assumed. so cool that we had, like, co-ed running. I thought so, too. We're very ponytailed in the front. I assumed we were a strong running lady, but... I. I guess. Yeah, I guess no, I'll... that's a that okay. That's a that's a feminine build on that main cover. Yeah, except for the totally disconnected mask like chin face thing going on there. Can and I also say, far... in case you look at them online, there's multiple covers of this book, and you you want to find the one where there's a metal hand reaching down, right? Yeah, I still want to believe we're in like a Paul Verhoeven style world where there's you know there are no boundaries between the sexes. Yeah, yeah, me too, man. Like showgirls. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gil Forbes is one of the golden people at school. You have always admired him from afar. You know the kind, good looks, good grades, popular with girls and guys. Great athlete and rich. I mean, cha-ching, dollar signs, etc. He has everything going for him. So why would he like me, you ask yourself, being poor? <laughs> Maybe because you don't suck up to him. You're a loner. Respected as a good athlete and excellent student. Not a geek. Not a fucking geek. But you go your <laughs> own way. Nobody really knows you. You don't belong to any group. And you like it that way. You wear a leather jacket. Although you keep to yourself, <laughs> you still have friends. But not very close ones. You missed the... Uh, okay. The, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Skip to the what, end. Do you, what do you mean? You're skipping over the character building. Skip to the oh end. Oh my god. We're our own character, Chad. The next day after Chad. practice, you approach Gail. Hey, Gail. Got a minute? Sure. What's up? He replies. You can't help but like him for this brilliant word choice. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, I mean, spit it out. I don't bite. He laughs, but it's a friendly laugh, not meant to torment or demean. Doping, drugs, steroids, stuff like that, you say in a muted tone. Why are you being well, such a dark? Gail replies, not looking at you. <laughs> well, how about coming over to my house? Too hot to discuss here. Great, what? when? What? Oh, wait, no, this is Gail saying it. We just divided up the dialogue like this. Great, when, you ask? Right now. <laughs> he moves to he moves off toward the parking lot in his car. You follow. The school parking lot is usually crowded, and today is no exception. You wonder where these kids got the money to buy a car. Even more than that, how do they manage to run them? Gas, tires, cocaine, repairs insurance <laughs> all that stuff you don't waste any time thinking about a car no way that's out of reach for you now legs legs are your car yeah i'd rather run everywhere 
Gail's car is a dream beyond dreaming for you. An apple red foreign sports car. You've never even seen one like it except for Gail's. Its cost would be enough for a family of four to live a whole year or more. Gail's world seems more like a dream than reality. Hey, Gail, what's up? yells a star linebacker on the football team just across from the parking lot. You can't help but like him. Wow, you can't help but like him. (laughs) (laughs) There are several other football players, including Chad with him, just getting into a late model SUV. (laughs) Everyone likes Gail, but people want to be hanging out with Chad. That's not true, but thank you. In a distant window, Kevin plays Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> someday, wishing that he had a friend who played football. <laughs> He'll have it someday. Paul considers his relationship with Christ off screen. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, you're probably doing film stuff or something. In, no, I was probably the- thinking about my relationship with Christ and then choosing to forsake it to go masturbate. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I think we were all struggling with our relationship with Christ at that point. Mm-hmm. The car smells of new leather and Christ, and you can't help but feel (laughs) envy slipping in. Pulling out of the car park, several more kids yell greetings and wave. You feel a sense of pride just being in the car with Gail. You don't like the feeling. You're not Gail. You're you. Just you. Wow. Having a little bit of an existential crisis here. Ooh, this is getting close to home for me. Home for Gail is a McMansion on the east side of town. No taste. This is where doctors, lawyers, financial people, cocainesmen, and other high net worth types live. Their huge, ugly houses are lined up like matching cereal boxes. Expensive cars sit in big driveways. Lately, there are more and more for sale signs spreading it upside. Greed can destroy. There's no question about that, you say to yourself. (laughs) (laughs) That's not even me. That's... That's the, the I, text. I, I don't believe. I don't believe you didn't know that. That's really. It's that's italicized. They're really. They're they're trying to say something here. You wonder if Gail's parents are ever affected by the economy. <laughs> they certainly vote <laughs> like it. <laughs> so here's the crib. Like it, Gail asks, getting out of the car. The house is a three-story Victorian-style mess with towers and porches and high windows and brickwork and stonework and lots of chimneys. Hold on, can are we like heading home to to hook up with Gail? Yeah, we're we're hoping Gail asks us to pull down our pants and so he can give us, you know, runner's massage. The roids. Yeah, okay. Body massage. Body massage. <laughs> Body massage, man. <laughs> Impressive but ugly. Built to make a statement, but not balanced or done with a sense of proportion or aesthetics. So they're trying to tell Gail's story through architecture. <laughs> well, it's, which it's kind of a fun. Is interesting. It would be more interesting from a filmic medium, I feel. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, 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 he's really painting a picture with this. Okay, so let's 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 hook up with Gail and secure him as our boyfriend. Great, is all you can muster in reply. Your own house is a two-bedroom bungalow, not much bigger than Gail's parents' four-car garage. Gail leads the way into the house. No one is home except for the cook. She isn't particularly welcoming. Gail leads the way into a large room complete with a huge plasma TV, a real unicorn, shelves <laughs> loaded with DVDs, an entertainment center, two giant couches, easy chairs, and a refrigerator, and a stovetop. And a case... second unicorn. And a second unicorn because the first one needed a friend. <laughs> Aww. This is where I hang, Gail says, spreading his hands to enclose the space. You are struck with how impersonal it is. There is nothing of Gail or of Jesus Christ in it. Just expensive (laughs) stuff and lots of it. (laughs) Okay, here's the deal. If you're serious about doping, then you're in then you're in right now. Do you really? You gotta kind of like ease in a little bit more, Gail. You can't just Im- implicate us in a conspiracy right off the bat. Yeah, prey on our like insecurities about our our strength. Like talk about how it's been giving you a boost in in racing. Get some buy in, Gail. Yeah. There's a vow of silence you have to take. We don't kid around. If it's not for you, that's okay. We'll hang for a while, play some Magic the Gathering. I've got a blue uh, counterspell deck, and you can play on my cousin's <laughs> elf ball, red, uh, green. It'll be fine, but no more talk about this subject, unless you're in right goddamn now. 
If you decide to be in and take the vow, click here. If you decide to play magic cards with his jank ass cardboard, <laughs> click here. What is it? What is the second choice actually? If you decide to opt out. I mean, it's a vow to take drugs, Paul? Like, it's. Mm, I don't it's know. It's not gonna. It, there's no way there's gonna be a good outcome if we take drugs. The, but I right? wonder if like, being in automatically makes it so that we're taking the drugs i'm trying to get in there and i'm trying to i'm trying to set gail up yeah 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 yeah. i want to like i want all the evidence and then report i want to bring gail down from the inside (laughs) do you think do we think this book has that much multiple story branches including i sure hope so arby's leg this is your chance to stand up for yourself i think the only thing i want in my body is roast beef (laughs) and christ (laughs) And Christ. and Christ, and Christ, in his communion that transubstantiates from <laughs> from bread into his body. I've heard they can bless the buns at Arby's. Ooh. Why not? Right? If Christ can, like, why say that he can only transform in these very taste tasteless wafers? Why not? Hey, through through Christ, all things are possible. So, are we opting out? Or are we? We're opting drugs? out. It sounds like. Yeah. Let's yeah. opt out. You are dead. What? Gale kills you with his wizard no. powers. You should have been cool. <laughs> he freezes your body in his walk-in refrigerator, and then he kickflips you into a snowbank. <laughs> what, actually, what actually happened? The whole thing smells like dead fish to you. Uh, <laughs> all right. It's one thing to envy someone like Gale. It's a different thing to try and be Gale and take on his lifestyle. You follow your gut. And the Lord. And your (laughs) gut says, no, no, no. Gail doesn't like it one bit that you want out. He suplexes you into the cook. (laughs) You see the color rising in his face to bright crimson. His nostrils flaring. His blue eyes closing and getting hard looking. Beat it, you wuss. If I ever hear of you talking about this, you will be history. Big time. Don't try to blow up my spot. I do drugs. There goes our sting. Our sting is completely (laughs) blown. Get my meaning? He stalks out the room like some predatory beast who has just lost his prey. Time to make tracks, you say to yourself. (laughs) Time to beat cheeks, I say, as I (laughs) run away. Come on, legs. Let's get out of here, he says. Sure, sure. I think we can incriminate him with this. Yeah, sorry, Kevin. I I think we we have enough evidence. We can take him down. Yeah. You, you You have that yak back on you, right? (laughs) <laughs> yeah uh the one for water are we gonna put drugs in there no no so you can re- you recorded m- like seven oh, seconds yak of this whole i was thinking of a camel back for water yak wow back, yak yes. back yeah. the other talk boy is that what you're talking about yeah, yeah hi kids yeah. we're home early <laughs> hi kids we're home, we're home early <laughs> sure sure you can count on it lips are sealed anyway what talk as far as I'm concerned, we never heard. We have never had any talk. We ain't talking. We never even heard of talk. Let's talk. I don't talk. You finish up by heading for the door. Now you are down the corridor, out the door, free into fresh, clean air. But you have no car. You came with Gale, <laughs> and you don't know this part of town. Dang. There aren't any bus stops here in McMansion Land. You'll have to hoof it. So get to it. Oh, my God. The it's picture, so scary. The picture is well, terrible. It looks like a... It's like a magic card for like a zombie kind of guy or like a person. He looks like an an attack on Titan. Yeah, he does look like a Titan. Wait, okay. I mean, here's the thing, though. We are runners, so this will just make us a stronger runner. Running away from this terror? Yeah. You're right. What doesn't kill us? Anytime we take a car or any transportation, we are limiting our body from getting stronger. As oh, well. I thought you were talking about this terrible picture of Gale. Uh, yes, I also agree with that. This is just more training for us. Days pass with nights filled with nightmare dreams about gangs and beatings. And what? Murders. Why? I don't know, man. That's what, that's what it says. What is our what? life? What's wrong with you us? You skip practice for two days, and when you do go back, you vary your hours, so it's not run to kill. We're a fucking coward. Yeah, we we are in the right here. I, I feel like you're, the legs have the right idea here. You feel as though you're not real. <laughs> as though you're but a shadow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You feel like butter spread over too much bread. <laughs> Your coaches notice it, and one in particular, Coach Bud Devlin. We all knew a Bud Devlin, right? Asks you to a meeting, a black mass. You don't know him well. 
but he's a likable and great coach, <laughs> despite being one of the youngest coaches ever to exist. He is he is nine years old. <laughs> Bud takes you to a McDonald's play place near you, <laughs> famous for its veggie burgers, smoothies, and oven-baked vegetable fries. Uh, what? <laughs> okay. You take a booth at the back, away from the kids who are hunched over iPods, Blackberries, and iPhones. No, wait, hold on. What does it actually say? It, this it literally says it. 70... That's what it says. No, it it's, says is this book written in like the 80s? Book. This is a... Yeah, I just mentioned DVDs a little earlier. This is so, a modern book, know. Chad. Okay. But I don't okay. know about hunched over iPods. What is there to look at? You gotta make your track list. You gotta look at... Did you ever just like scroll through your old wheel just like, ah, oh, yes, I have this song, and then I have this song. And then I or did you ever play like track trivia on your like iPod Oh my classic? god, I forgot about that. Yes. Like, yeah. I just liked spinning the wheel. I would just stare off while I listened to my music and felt that... You know, that... Watching those exclusive Strong Bad emails yeah. on the iPhone. <laughs> <iPod. laughs> I spent all night downloading and putting it on my phone so I can watch a 30-second Strong Bad video. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's up? Well, we need his baby voice. What's up? Problems at home, love problems, money? He asks in a frontal attack. <laughs> at least he doesn't play games. None of the above, you reply. You are now on a slippery ground. Should you trust him or not? If you do, just how much trust? Boy, do you feel lonely. A friend is just what you need. Bud toys with a straw like he's toying with your emotions. Uh, Why is every well, adult trying to like manipulate us? Well, you're a track star, so yeah, I guess you're you're a promising young athlete. So yeah, we're, we're not even the highest ranked track star yet, but every we're close. Like, coaches are just lurking. We're damn close. You decide to dive in. What's to lose? This isn't something like Gail's trainer or whatever he is, Pete or the Fox, as he likes to be called. <laughs> <laughs> That's real. That's not me making it up. That is real. I saw it. That's all the words. Also, the you're totally a hunched up goblin in this fucking picture. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Quasimodo energy coming off of the, that picture. Yeah, why are we calling? Why are we calling? How do you see this as a goblin? I want to yes and this. How do you see us as a goblin? Uh, he's just all hunched it's on the right, not looking. on the left, not the guy, yeah, not the guy facing I mean, the camera, yeah, the guy sure. facing away from the camera. Look how look how low his neck is in relationship to his shoulders. <laughs> Chad, his skin is green and he's wearing a bone necklace and he's holding a spear with a head on the end of it. He's a goblin. <laughs> Look at the size of his shoulder, like, compared to the size of his noggin. No, you're right. You're right. We're a goblin boy. Um, and goblins are known sprinters and long distance runners, so. He's right. I'm just not sure that I'm really good enough to really deliver in the big races. I think I'm probably only a flash in the pan and also ran, you know? A clever wordplay from this young kid that we are. <laughs> Well, you're not. Look, maybe I can help. You feel like you don't have the extra edge, right? Don't worry. I don't mean illegal drugs, steroids or cocaine or Jesus or stuff like that. <laughs> there are other legal supplements that can give you the edge you need. He looks at you with steady eyes. Have you ever tried goblin drink? <laughs> you feel a mix of excitement and apprehension. Is he for real? Is goblin drink really legal? <laughs> 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 are there really performance enhancing substances that really do work and are legal you have heard that there are and this man doesn't have the crooked look or feel you imagine pushers probably have give me the are G we supposed juice. to thrice deny the drug the druggists i'm just assuming this entire book is drugs being offered to us like this is crazy we've done very little running i will take the g juice give it to me Give me the goblin drink. <laughs> I wish to sip it. Uh, well, how does it work? What do I do, you ask? A bunch of kids get up to leave like doves in a John Woo flick and throw a glance over at you. One waves at the coach. You wonder if they suspect what's going on. Did, have they sipped of the goblin juice? But hey, wait a minute. Bud Devlin said it was a legal substance. And Bud Devlin wouldn't lie to you. Over the next several days, you and Bud Devlin get to know each other, <laughs> okay. and you gain more respect and trust in this kind, gentle but firm coach, okay. much uh -huh. like a gentle but firm couch. He's definitely we didn't make a coming. choice. We didn't make a choice here to trust him or not. We're just hanging out with him. Your dad has <laughs> slipped deeper into depression, so he's a what? <laughs> going to what? Left, going to left field with that one. <laughs> Your dad has slipped deeper <laughs> into depression. It's so real. It's just like my life. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> you have to remember that that's hereditary. So look out for that. Yeah. One. 
So we yeah. woo, it's coming for you. <laughs> I guess I'll keep running away from my problems. Holy shit. <laughs> you don't want to burden your mom. She has enough on her shoulders. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your dad has been buying cat's meow houses to put on top of all the doors in the house in his deep, <laughs> deep depression. But shows you reports on legal substances, shows you examples of athletes using the substances, but doesn't <laughs> actually ask you to start using them. No pressure from him. He also helps in f- your form and style of running. Great. Your times are improving and you feel good. Really good. Really good. The big meets are all coming up soon. And one day, Bud says to you, decision time, my friend. Do you want to use the goblin drink or not? <laughs> I, I mean, it sounds like we're getting better without the drugs. Yeah, it kind of does. <clears throat> Nobody said that goblin drink is illegal. I'm taking it. I, I do wish, I, I know that they probably can't for legal reasons say what the drugs are. I do wish we had like some name for it, right? Um, drug X or the T-virus, if you will. Like something to to make more of a call on. Turbo Slice. Yeah, yeah. I, I know we're calling it goblin juice and it's called it's canonically goblin juice. Paul, it sounds like you want to take it. Yeah, it I'm says gonna... a sip of goblin juice will cause you to run on all fours, making you twice as fast. <laughs> I wonder if that's legal. <laughs> I wonder if you could beat people or in all fours, they allow it. It says it will make your appendages thirst for speed and blood violence. It says it'll put feet where your hands are and hands where your feet are. <laughs> How are you feeling about this other leg? I'm feeling good. This bottle says it'll make us into a sick, sick running fuck. So you, so, so you want to take the drugs? Yes, I do. Fa- I want Fast to leg it. wants to take the drug. I, I, I see where where we might reach an impasse here. Arby's leg doesn't want to take the drugs, but, but Fast he t- leg, but wants he, to but he treated us to Arby's. So I guess there's only I trust him. There's only the possibility of more Arby's in this for us. Like, I can also, I don't want to be too meta. I feel like the listeners want us to take the drugs. Take the drugs. Take the drugs. Let's take the drugs. Drugs. Life drugs. It's like a hurricane. <laughs> it can be made up of lots of seemingly little turns and minor decisions, but it can also be made up of big decisions. Choices that reach into the future. You've just made a choice that yes. might be the kind that reaches into the future with unforeseen outcomes. Yes. You're nervous. It's a bit like being out on the edge of a cliff over a pool of water, 150 feet up. Don't look down. Whatever mm-hmm. that means in this metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, how do we start? I mean, what do we do? Simple as eating a pizza, is Bud Devlin's reply. <laughs> How is this entire town not getting caught with this doping? There's doping going on everywhere. Yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is some wacky stuff, man. The stakes are so low for what? High school sports? High school <laughs> sports. I know, I know we want to get a college diploma or a college uh, scholarship, but stakes are low. Simple as eating a pizza. I've got a supplier who takes all your stats. You know, height, weight, age, all the tests we've been doing for the last month. So, I mean, what's that all about? He has a set of algorithms, you know, the AI, equations, <laughs> formulas, that kind of stuff. Out comes the correct blend of supplements customized just for you. Neat, isn't it? Devlin looks really excited. He's kicking his legs up and putting a bottle on his head and scooting around. As <laughs> usual, as as honest as the day is long, you've never really understood that old what that old saying means. You'll have to look it up in the local library. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds cool. Nice. I'm. I, Sorry, he, he, so the book said you'll have. No, to don't say it. it. Don't say it. We're getting. We're not giving and, him the free promotion. And that's what that. And Ke- I love. Ke- oh, yeah, you, Kevin was going to say the name of a popular search result engine that is. <laughs> no, he smartly evil, avoided it. and I appreciate that Kevin dodged around it. You'll have to ask Jeeves later. <laughs> ask <laughs> Jeeves about it. Yeah, sounds cool. When do I get it? I'll have it for you tomorrow. Tastes like a chocolate shake. You'll like it. And it is Evergo juice. And it is Evergo juice. And it is Goblin juice. Yeah, that's what the go stands for, Goblin juice. Devlin gives you his winning smile. You can't help but like this guy. We He's can't help but nine like years old. every guy. We are really thirsting out there. We didn't get to kiss uh, Gail. And I'm we, kind of upset about that. I have a feeling our depressed dad gave us a complex. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Maybe if I win all the meats, my dad won't be depressed anymore. <laughs> Maybe if Arby's has all the meats, our dad <laughs> will love us. Dad, again. I keep bringing you back the five for five deal, and you don't seem to be happy about it. <laughs> then nothing can save him, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, guilt is like a... (laughs) Okay, go on. (laughs) Guilt is like a constant companion for you. Much like Jesus Christ. It always has been. You don't really know why, because you don't lie, you don't cheat, you don't steal. Okay, maybe a tiny bit. You did take $10 from your mom's purse once. But that feeling... (laughs) But the feeling that you have done something wrong persists. You're, you wonder if most kids feel this way. Is it the system or is it human nature? You take a drag from your cigarette <laughs> or are you just a weirdo? At any rate, guilt is one of those persistent, unpleasant, unwanted things. A thought hits you. Maybe it's something in your diet. Too much sugar? <laughs> Too much caffeine from soft drinks and chocolate? Maybe you're <laughs> allergic to something. Who knows? Life just seems too much sometimes. Oh no, there's that depression kicking in, oh no! You're grateful for sports. There's nothing like a good, (laughs) long, hard workout. Uh Uh-huh. It always clears your mind, for a while anyhow. So, on to tomorrow and the chocolate shake. Can I just add to the stranger danger that, like, this is a homemade blend of things. We don't know what this guy's putting in. In the shake. It's Gabo drink. It's fine. Here it is, Coach Devlin says, holding out a purple and red plastic sports bottle. He gives it a good shake before he hands it to you and says, enjoy. You take it and hold it as though it were a poisonous snake. (laughs) Now's the time. Then again, it's not too late to change your mind, is it? They gave us the choice. We would have had the choice with Gale. We could have totally put Gale away, man. I know. Refuse the goblin drink or sip it. <laughs> I'm sipping it. I think it'd be annoying to have gone through that yeah. last section of the book and now to say no. It's time to sip and sup upon this drink. You yeah, sup yeah, the yeah. shit out of that. Here goes nothing, you say, as you tip the purple and red plastic bottle to your lips. You notice it says Michael's special stuff on the side. <laughs> I was just thinking about Space Jam. Are we going to find out it's just water? There's nothing in it. He's right. It tastes just like a chocolate shake. So. No sudden flashes of lights, no shazam, no instant power forces surging in you. Nobody's watching you, they're just a good smoothie. Mm -hmm. You relax. Anyway, there's no sign of goons from the pee patrol. (laughs) What is that referencing? The the FDA? See, now Chad, I miss you calling me out. Because that's, that's real. That's real. Like called the pee pee no, patrol. I, I, yeah, I hope listeners understand, even though Kevin is a master of working in aside details to it, other than like a lot of the goblin juice and the Christ in this, a lot of this is in the book. <laughs> like, this is written really bizarrely. Um, boy, boy uh, listener, I could go for a tall glass of goblin juice right about now. I yeah, but too. the pee patrol is all around us. Pee the patrol. pee patrol? Oh, like it's urine. Thanks, coach. Now what? Nothing. <laughs> it's just a good help for your body. You know bodies get depleted from exertion, right? <laughs> well, this stuff helps your body replenish more quickly and efficiently. That's all. It facilitates the release of your own natural energy that you can draw on in a race. How often do I take it? Daily. Drugs are great. We've got 10 days before states. That should be enough time for you to get the maximum drugs from it. You'll do great. I know it. I love you. The rest (laughs) of the workout goes normally. A little put off by what your coach said earlier. You think you feel a little more stamina or sharpness. God, this goes on for fucking ever. Is the drugs good or is drugs bad? (laughs) Time Uh, slows down. We're just dreaming. We probably can skip these next two paragraphs. Requiem for a Dream soundtrack starts to play. Uh, you like Bud Devlin, but he's kind of creeping you out. Finally, it's the day of the race. There we go. Finally, it's the day of the race. <laughs> really <laughs> pumped, but also apprehensive. So, you know. Uh, so much hangs on this one race. It's unreal, and yet so real. Man, fucking, they were cooking with this one, you know? <laughs> unreal and yet so real. Unreal and yet so real. I think, yeah, the writer, uh, Ari Montgomery was feeling it with this one. That's like an incubus lyric, dog. Like, that's fucking deep. Can I can I say you skipped over a, a sentence of, I do love incubus. Despite how much you like Bud Devlin, his statement leaves you feeling kind of used. It's as if you were a workhorse, his workhorse, doing his bidding. I'm okay with being the workhorse. 
I want to run fast. Some kind of horse with four legs? Think of all the personalities you could have. <laughs> uh, day of the race. You feel good. Ready to run the race of your life. <laughs> Sell it to us, Kevin. Come on. Everything seems like a dream. <laughs> As you strip off the warm-ups and do final stretches, pump your legs up and down. Take a drink of water. Hydration is so important. And taking deep breaths. The sun seems brighter than ever. The air, sweet. The crowd, only a blur. The track is cindered. Cindered? Mm. With, its, mm. with its white lines. Mm. You hear voices, but you don't even try to listen to them. Even Coach Devlin's final instructions don't really register. You're in the zone. That place where you and the moment become one. <laughs> Indivisible, which is what becoming one means. Un- mm. Unknowable. Okay. Uh, and yet... All knowledge compressed into time and space. And in that moment, we were infinite. (laughs) Jesus Christ. A track kid really did write this on cocaine. Drugs are great. Your feet find the starting block. Your fingers stretch and splay on the red cinders. You are poised. Time, stored energy, adrenaline, hope, and faith, and drugs all bonded together. (laughs) You are goblin. You are ready. From the very start of the race, everything's a blur. Everything. Time vanishes. The only thing you remember is crossing the finish line. You win. You win by a big margin. (laughs) You look down. Gale is dead. (laughs) You have killed Gale with your speed. (laughs) The sonic boom behind you decimates the community. (laughs) Your dad's depression is killed instantly. He becomes president. (laughs) He's a skeleton now, but his depression's killed. The crowd goes wild. People slap you on the back, grab your hand, hug you. Scream at you. Then you stand on the podium, metal around your neck. Nothing can detract from your sense of pride and accomplishment. The nightmare begins. We rock. (laughs) Your pre-race urine sample shows illegal performance-enhancing drugs. Amphetamines. Uh, What? How did this happen? When? You search for Devlin. He's talking to three officials. His face is cloud white. His arms and hands are flying about in protest. He's windmilling real hard. You hear his voice. (laughs) Never. I never gave him anything illegal. Just protein and glucose mix. You have to believe me. But the tests don't lie. You're stripped of your metal. Disgrace hangs over you like a dirty wash. Your career at high school on the track team is over. Coach Devlin maintains they gave you nothing illegal. You want to believe him. And a part of you does. Maybe somebody else doctored your supplement or got amphetamines into your food. People who are desperate to win will do anything. A dark thought crosses your mind. Maybe somebody wanted to take you down. We got gailed. Maybe they knew you were probably going to win and they wanted to make sure that if you did, you would get disqualified. This is no longer kindergarten. You're in the adult world, like it or not. The end. We needed to do it to Gail before Gail did it to us. We got screwed. God damn it. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Okay. So I mean, we did win the race. We did win. It's I think, true. and I think we did it on our own merits. To complete, be completely honest. Here's my question: Did they typically do pre-race uh, urine tests and then wait to to, to reveal it <laughs> until after the race? Yeah, that seems very. Uh, designed for dramatic irony, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I also just kind of assume in a lot of like high schools, they don't have the infrastructure and bandwidth to do that for kids. Like, yeah, I, mean, I guess I, for states, for states plural, I guess they could do it. I gotta say this, guys, that subterfuge killed all will I have to win. I no longer care about being the fastest. Light. Oh, the fact that you think, wow. you're, you're, oh, you think you don't think it was coach? You think someone? I think. Doctored oh yeah, the results. I think we got screwed. I think we. I think Gail. When we when we denied the call of it to adventure from Gale, decided that he needed to take us down. I think he he juiced us at some point. That sounds about right. Can we go back? Can we go back to Gale? Yeah, do you want to go back to not do we go back all the way back to Gale or do we want to refuse the goblin juice? I mean, like, I don't know. What are we even doing with Dev like Coach Devlin if we're not? He's our buddy. He's just a little guy. He's dancing around, casting his spells, and doing his potions. I I mean do you, Paul, do you genuinely do you genuinely think he didn't drug us? I think he did drug us. I'm positive he drugged us. You, you think, are you saying okay. Devlin? You coach, no, I'm, I'm you think, saying that Gale c- drugged us. Okay, you think Devlin coached De- Devlin? That's his name, right? Yeah, I think yeah, Devlin's I think on Devlin, the up. Uh, Devlin's a patsy here. Like, yeah, I think Devlin's on the up and up. Devlin couldn't drug his way out of a paper bag. Clearly, Gale 
we spurned him by being poor and not loving him. Yes. Can I point out that like our parents are, I know dad's depressed. Our parents are not here. Like they <laughs> did not come to the meet. They have no involvement in this. There's no mention of them reacting to any of this. Um, we are really. Involved. I support my father no matter what. Yeah, I'm hype about my depressed track father. <laughs> He's just watching TikTok videos and eating Cheetos all day. Good for him. I mean, there's if you really believe Devlin is innocent, other leg, we could go back to the time where we say no to the drink. What's your evidence against Devlin? That I he's mean, a weirdo freakazoid? Yeah, I don't know. I think a weird man going, I'm going to make you a drink myself and not let you see what's in it. But trust me, it's good. He didn't. He has a guy. He has a guy who makes the drink. Yeah, there's all that makes even worse. There's another unknown person, right? But he takes your biometric data into account. We haven't. But we didn't go through any part where he's like scanning our body or putting like electrodes to us. And well, then we can say no to the drink, but still spurn Gale. Well, that's that's my thought was either we could say. We could say yes with Gale and go down Gale's drug ride, or we could give Devlin the benefit of the doubt. But we know, we know that's going to end. There's no "you do drugs and win" ending to this. Yeah, but sometimes people do do drugs and let's, win. Let's let's uh, let's just let's do a test. Let's do one test. Let's okay. do. Let's just not drink uh, Devlin's drink and see what happens. Okay. Yeah. 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 So we 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 let him start to train us, and we were like, "No, thank you. We don't want the drink." Yes. Let's just do that. I agree. You decide against using them. He's like, I spent all this time making these fucking drinks, and now you don't want them? God damn it. You look away from your friend and coach. You feel as though you are about to betray him. He's invested so much time in you. If you say no, and he drops your friendship, you will again face the loneliness that has bothered you for so long. (laughs) You'll be like having a depressed dad all over again. But you just can't accept the supplement use, even if it is legal, or at least not illegal. There is something so inherently wrong in taking advantage over others in a race by using a supplement. That's not what Jesus Christ would do. You are not a goody two-shoes, like the Lord. You just believe that some things are right and others are absolutely wrong. It's not as though you haven't thought about it, using supplements, even banned ones. You have. But you always come with total you always come up with total rejection. Yeah. yeah. That way you can live with yourself. Hey coach, you start out with your voice is scratchy from nervousness at what you're about to do. Yeah, I'm here. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what cleats or spikes should I use in the race on Saturday? You have completely ducked the issue. Coward, you say to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> we'll decide on Friday. Weather can play a role. You'll be fine. You're doing great. Thanks, coach. Have you thought about my proposal yet? You know, about the turbo drugs. <laughs> Here it is. Time for truth. You feel as though the ground underneath you is sinking away, and you're free-falling into space, like that song, Free-Falling. Into space. (laughs) If that song was about space. Yeah. Suddenly, your head clears, and you feel grounded. Reality's here. Yeah, coach. Yeah, I have. It's not for me. I'm sorry. Bud Devlin looks at you with a warm smile, creasing his sunburned face. Not to worry. It's okay with me. I don't want any pressure on you. You train wonderfully. You're in superb shape. You don't need those supplements anyway. Go for wow. it. Wow. Fire it up. See? He didn't he did not drug us. The relief <laughs> coming from his generous acceptance of your rejection of his offer to help with supplements is extraordinary. It's like <laughs> the euphoria of winning a race, but the real test is Saturday, and this race is a big one for you. It's the day of that big race. The butterflies are there, as always, but fear has left you. You are confident that, win or lose, your life goals are on track. You'll get to college one way or another. You're sure of that. Bang. You're (laughs) shot dead on the track. What? (laughs) What? The starting gun was loaded. Oh, my God. It was a terrible accident. Starting gun, focus all of your attention, mind, body, and soul, in the present moment, as you race, not only against the others, but against yourself. The outcome. You fill this one in. Zoom. Gun. Gun. Dead bodies. <laughs> Run, imagery, the end. That's it. Wait. That's literally yeah. it. Wait, oh, my God. Wait. Wait. Yeah. No, I thought, you were, I, I, th- I thought you were joking this whole time. This I thought one, we were doing a goof. No, this one's artistic. There's a... Yeah. That, yeah. That's, that's actually kind of bold. Not being wait. Like, real hey, quick. What, pa- what page win. of this book are you on? I need to see this for myself. 116. 115. 115 into and... 118 or 117. What? 118. Yeah. It just leaves it open-ended as it should. It's beautiful. That's oh, the wow. Sopranos ending that we deserved. 
yeah, it's kind of uncommon coming across a, a, an ending as I feel bad for kind of like making fun of this book. R.A. was <laughs> cooking on this one. I'm sorry. What? R.A. Yeah. Montgomery, climb whatever the hell you want. And you're, I'm proud of you for what you climbed. Okay, okay, okay. So it's not that the, it's unclear if the gun shot you. No, no, murder no, is it not. Is. It is well, unclear if I mean, the gun it could shot be, you. I guess. Bang, the starting gun focuses all your attention, mind, body, and soul in the present moment as you race not only against the others, but against yourself. The outcome you fill this one in. I guess we could canonically say maybe in the second between the bullet firing and this peace of mind we have, the bullet is coming towards us. I guess we could explain I'm that. sorry, Chad. Uh, the words, you fill this one in, appear on the page. And what I am understanding is that we were shot by the start. This is gun. truly... <laughs> This is truly a Sopranos-esque ending. It cut to black. It showed us a couple images and cut to black and said, I don't know. What do you think happened? The lesson is the world is absurd, Chad. And drugs offer you a, a, a momentary reprieve from the absurdity by making everything make too much sense, you know? It's not yeah, that he wanted yeah. to win. He just wanted life to make sense. I now I gotta ask because I've never seen The Sopranos. The ending, as I understand it, is they're at a diner mm-hmm. and all of the family is there. Yeah, yeah. And the waiter is like, "What do you want to order?" And just before Tony Soprano says anything, it cuts to credits, and so you never know what Tony ordered. There's uh, there's a little bit more context leading up to that, which is Tony was training to, for a race. Gah, uh, cool. Then, okay, so. cool. Was he gonna have mil- dealt milk and dairy? Or and not? they famously yeah. went to a place that sold that sold Gabo drink. Uh, yeah, <laughs> in the only place in Jersey, and he was always talking about Gabagool, uh, which, Gabagool. Was, which was something that he desired but never felt that he <laughs> could act could actually bring himself to take. And you you have to wonder if he decided to take the Gabagool drink that night. It's a really beautiful, <laughs> the golden age of television. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, okay, I mean that is a that is a beautiful ending. It's a just... bold, beautiful ending. That's a that book is a wild book. It's got it all. It's really got it all. It's got uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. It's got a depressed it's got father. Lord, it's got Helios, the sun god. Helios, the it's sun really, god. Yeah, it's got uh, a, a man powered by gasoline and cocaine. We don't even know what Helios was doing over there. Like, he, he was... I, I'm going to guess Helios was the one that drugged us, I think. Wow. You're putting that on Helios? Yeah, I think one of the two uh, rich kids definitely did it to us. We don't know that Helios is rich. Mm-hmm. Son of a god. Maybe he enjoys a euro here and there. That's true. A little Spanakopita. Yeah, flipping through it, and these illustrations are crazy. I think even the fact that there's a drawing of a gun is like, can't believe you guys got away with this. There's there's a drawing, and I, I only say this, I really encourage listeners to, to look this book up. There is a drawing, and I wish I knew the context, of a metal man with a head like Daft Punk <laughs> eating <laughs> eating fish and vegetables mm-hmm. like 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 a mouser from the ninja turtles robot <laughs> and it, at some point is that a metaphor or at some point do we become a cyborg who's to say paul you said you said you had some prior knowledge of this one did you, did you uh, explore any of these paths i didn't explore anything else i do see the picture that uh chad is talking about uh absolutely bonkers it, it looks like that sexy japanese uh robot drawer guys robots uh, the yep. guy who draws oh, the, the one that uh, yeah the only sexy robots that are ever drawn yeah the, the metal uh, the metallic the Aerosmith Aerosmith had the guy yeah, who the, got it right I'll find the artist for you uh, yeah, I'm just gonna Google I'm gonna Google beautiful sexy metal robots yeah he always draws like chrome ladies where they're like what if it's just like a woman's body but like they had a a dome head Hajime Sora Soriyama is the name of the uh, artist yeah uh, I'll I'll send you the pictures um, remember Kevin when I was trying to get you to make like a sexy robot dating sim with me and I was like this is the this is what the characters would be like and I sent you all of those arts I, yeah yeah I remember it vividly as I remember all of our interactions <laughs> <laughs> uh, the oh uh, the only details that I got were from from George were that you can reach a point where you can decide whether to turn your friend into the FBI in for doping. Oh, you had insider. You had really insider information. I, I knew that that was. A, I knew there was an option to do that, and I knew that we wouldn't do it because we're not rats. Yeah, flipping through, I see there's an option of like tell your mom about the sting. Yeah. So there, I I would have loved to pull that off. I think we needed to keep going with game. You can. Se- that's what I think too. You can set up a sting. I don't. I Whoa. wouldn't. I wouldn't rat, but I would definitely have drugged him and gotten him caught that way. <laughs> that's that's different. Rat adjacent. That's different. <laughs> <laughs> can I can I can I read just a snippet from another timeline? Uh-huh. Please. Uh 
<laughs> Surprisingly, escaping from this madhouse is as easy as eating a slice of pizza. Wow, they really like that metaphor. You you just turn around and walk out the way you came. The screams stop abruptly. Maybe they had come from TV in another room. Maybe not. I think we're like in an insane asylum. You expect to hear a fox running after you or even a gunshot or a yell. Nothing. You just exit into the fading sunlight of late afternoon. You wonder if Foster's people really did have you, quote, covered. It's what? all like some dream. What? You make tracks. For, I'm, ass, I'm assuming this is part of the sting. Sounds you make like tracks it. for home, but you are tormented by fear that Fox and his gang will never leave you alone. You know too much. You wonder about Foster. Will he just let you walk away? Two days later, an announcement comes over the school PA system asking all students go to your homerooms. You want, uh, there's <laughs> the World Trade Center has been hit. <laughs> The principal comes on the PA in a somber voice to announce that Gail Forbes has died in an automobile accident early this morning. The chief of police comes on to announce that Gail had been the object of a dangerous high-speed chase by police who saw him driving erratically on the interstate. You wonder why they gave the details, but maybe he was seen as a warning to other kids. <laughs> yeah, I was like, maybe this? you don't need to tell us. Dudes, they're talking about roid rage. Gail was going nuts lately, a kid in your class announces to the others. There are murmurs of agreement, sadness, shock, anger, tears, and disbelief. Gale had been a golden boy, capital G, capital B, and now he is gone. The minute the PA ends, the room erupts into a buzz loud enough to drown out a heavy metal band at full volume. Gale's dead, can you believe it? No way, the guy's a god! This can't be happening. Life's short. He was always pushing it. Some people are stunned, speechless. Some are crying. One girl sobs uncontrollably. Was she Gail's girlfriend, you wonder? In the past few weeks, various rumors have been swirling around Gail that he had dumped his girlfriend, that he was no longer interested in girls, that maybe he was gay. You figured the rumors started because people were confused about Gail's personality changes, aggression, anger, fits of rage. More sensible rumors, but rumors nonetheless, blamed his personality changes on drug usage. EPO, HGH, anabolic steroids. There you go, they're actually saying some. More rumors said Goblin steroid juice. use... Goblin juice. Yeah. More rumors said steroid use could lead to impotency and loss of sex drive. Gaggles of kids coming from other rooms seeking the comfort of friends. Five days later, there's a funeral for Gail. His parents look devastated. Who knows? Maybe they really did love him. Maybe they really did care. <laughs> End of story. This is uh, this is great stuff. This is like a this is really like a drug PSA book. It, it's really this book is really going for it. I like that. I like that. <laughs> There's death. There's kids getting killed in horrible car accidents. There's somehow you can turn into a robot that still wants to eat meats and <laughs> just vegetables. Just driven to consume yeah. meat and veggies. I, I love this book. This book's great. Here's the thing. Now, it's often said in the lock picking community that <laughs> uh, a lock is only good for keeping honest people honest. I don't think this huh. would turn around huh. any person's life if they wanted to cheat to do drugs no oh like if i was thinking about doing it i would i would probably be like well it sounds like he won all of his races so just don't get caught yeah i think that is a lesson you can get from this you know the most effective uh movie i ever watched in health class was not a preachy mess like track star exclamation point it was the cat who drank too much is that a real is that a real movie yes <laughs> Was it okay? Please describe it more. Was it an anthropomorphic cartoon cat like Richard Scarry, or was it like a, a real cat? No, it was a live action cat who drove a live a who drove a little car, <laughs> like Tunes's or yeah. like Mouse of the Motorcycle, I guess. Maybe more. Yeah. No, I mean like he drove a car, and he's a cat, and it's called the cat who drank too much. And does I he, own the book. Does he have a horrible he, accident? Did he, and did yes, he have yeah, a horrible? No, he dreams of having a horrible accident because he huh. drinks from his cat bowl too much. Is it implied that his cat bowl is liquor? Yes, yeah, that's the implication there. Okay, all right. So there's really just a bad pet ownership there. Letting well, the cat even have a car anyway. Yeah, I mean, if he can pay for it, <laughs> I mean, you probably have to get on the lease with him. I'm trying to think. Like, I feel like the the PSA videos that stuck with me was, and this is maybe Christian Bible Camp, M McGee and me. Did you guys have McGee and me? Mm -mm, no, I don't think so. It was like, um, what if a cartoonist boy drew a little like Mad uh, Mad Max little little kid named McGee, and he would like come out of the page and like help him use the power of Christ and not do drugs. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know that one. Yeah. 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 No, I don't think uh, I don't think anything affected me. I'm a real me I'm a real messed up guy, so I think uh, all the bad <laughs> stuff just got into me. 
I want to be clear. I never did drugs in my sports <laughs> career. Never did them. Straight edge. Yeah. I, <laughs> I believe follow, that. Follow with a quiet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will acknowledge Chad's thing without incriminating myself. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is a really, you know, I think, I think the the best one we've ever done has still been back to pass. Yeah, of the course. Football one because it had paths. But also, I think when we went down the gun violence route, it was surprising because it hadn't been. Yeah, this one was just arranged from the start almost. Yeah, I feel like we were doomed to die. I feel, book. yeah, like there was really no reason. I'm sorry, kid, but there's no, there's nothing good waiting for us at the other end of this. I kind of wish like we had been set up as if we were doping. Um, oh, sure, sure, sure. And like maybe, maybe make like make us innocent to start, like to start, and maybe we're trying to prove our innocence or something like that. Okay, and, like, okay, yeah. We can get wrapped up in the world of drugs if we're like, well, if I'm going to get labeled a doper, I might, might as, well as well actually do it. Do it yeah, man. yeah, 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 yeah. I, I mean, I actually, if you really wanted to make kids feel about the consequences of it, I know they instead of having these kind of like one page, well, and you got caught, and your career's over, the end. It should almost yeah. be more of like make you spend time in the accusation in the call when the part where you're you're canceled, so to speak, right? Mm-hmm. Where you're like you're now think about how much that is and like the girl that you wanted to 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 smooch you doesn't want to smooch you anymore because she's worried she's gonna get drugs like or whatever, you know? Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> we all know drugs can be passed by lips. Wow, goblin <laughs> juice certainly can. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. That stays mm-hmm. that stays on your breath for a while. Well, I think that's been a that's been a a, a choose. That's what we yeah, that's, what we, say. that's what we say. At yeah, the end that's what we say. Yeah, it's been an adventure. Kevin, thank you for for BMing for us. Well, thank you so much for having me BM. Did we did we actually go to Arby's or was that a restaurant? Not Arby's. Well, it was it was vegetarian Arby's. Chad, any any restaurant can be an Arby's if you bring your own roast beef. He's right. Yeah, yeah. You bring your own like donkey sauce, and you're good. <laughs> Um, huh. Well, if you want more, um, <laughs> liminal horrors of the preteen and high school world analyzed by a bunch of 30 something lads, uh, in, in 2024, maybe head on over to the Goosebuds Patreon. That's right. Goosebuds <laughs> has a Patreon. <laughs> What, what else can they? What else can they get there? Well, Ch- Chad, you wanted to. Uh, what did you want to discuss at the beginning of this? Something about butt plugs. Oh, chess players that uh, definitely had butt plugs in their butts while they were playing. <laughs> no, and how no one ever proved that chess player guy had a butt plug. Performance uh, enhancing oh. plugs is what they they call them, right? <laughs> That's very good. That's very good, Paul. AKA That's pep. Good. A little pep. Put a little pep in your step. That's why they say a little that. Little pep in your step. That's where that little. saying came from. It's very good. Um, yeah, we will probably discuss that in other topics uh, in our bonus Camp Goosebuds episode. We put out one every month for Patreon supporters. Uh, not only that, do you get access to our Discord. You can vote on books we're reading up soon. So probably the next time we do an adventure book, we'll put out a bunch of options on the Patreon and let you all vote and choose first. Uh, so if you want more teenage horror, sports horror, great. We'll got you covered. If not, maybe we'll do another give yourself goosebumps or something like it's that. It's a bit of a choose your own adventure. Yeah. It, it's a mini choose your... That's a great way to look at it, Paul. Thank you. You could choose to ignore this call to action to go to patreon.com slash goosebuds. And maybe goosebuds will die. Or <laughs> you can keep the podcast alive. And go to patreon.com slash goosebuds. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. I don't, I don't want to die. I don't want to do drugs. Help us. I'm not going to go smoke a big old fat bong after this. I'm Help good. us. <laughs> Yeah, if the if the bad thing to do is do drugs that make you better at the sport, then the best thing you could do is is do drugs to make you worse at the sport. <laughs> yeah. He's right. Yeah, He's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sabotaging your body for others is definitely the way to go. Yeah, smoke all that weed and try to run in a straight line. <laughs> <laughs> uh Kevin Kevin Paul, anything else people should check out? Um I post a picture of my cat once a week on uh, my Patreon, so if you'd like to see my cat, you can go to GiveKevinMoney.com. Even better, it's at the bottom of a thoughtful article that you tend to write about your ex- experiences with game design and just ge- life in general. Yeah, uh, it's all there. It's what I'm up to. Uh, Paul, what what have you been up to lately? I'm playing video games on the internet with, at YouTube.com slash Continue Show and, and doing this show and, uh, eh, you know. Just living. What about you, Chad? 
Uh, you know, working on a secret project I can't talk about probably for another two more years, uh, <laughs> and, uh, which is always fun. You'll just you'll get there though, and it, dude, when it's when it comes out, it's going to be a glorious, glorious day. When it comes out, it's gonna be many people. Cool. Many people are gonna be very happy. I think with that. Yeah. I think so. I think so. And um, all those people talking shit will be embarrassed that they ever knew about words fools. to start with. Are people talking shit? Should, all of them. Oh no! All oh, of them, no. Chad. You must rise uh, above them. Uh, Kevin and I do have a couple projects that are on the uh, that are probably going to come be coming out relatively soon. So uh, I don't know if they'll be out by the time this comes out. Probably not. But be on the lookout. God, no. God but, no. but we will be working on them. <laughs> They're close. It's close. Prepare your prepare your minds and bodies for a Paul Kevin joint. Chad has experienced it already. I loved it. I loved it so much. Thank I you. drank from its well. And I like like ant wash. I grew two feet. <laughs> wow! Thank, thanks, dude. <laughs> of course, um, that's already a lot on a lot. Like you're, yeah, yeah, you're like I ten know. feet I, tall now. Yeah, it's a burden. I'm, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> He had to get his bones shortened. Uh, you can also follow us on other social media apps, but like the internet's a bad place nowadays, mostly. But like, if you want to, you can follow us on Twitter. Uh, we do have a TikTok, Goosebuds Pod, trying to put clips of the episodes on there. Uh, telling friends about the show or leaving us a review on iTunes or Stitcher or other podcast apps helps us as well. If you can't go to Patreon or do any of those, but thank you all for the love and support. Uh, we just celebrated our 10th anniversary last episode. Hope you go listen to that. It's a very cool episode. Yay. Um, I'm going to go like smoke a big old fat bong and, and help out local sports. I'm going to go have a sip of goblin juice. <laughs> I'm going to go pray. Wow. <laughs> thank you all for listening until next time. Bye. Bye. Praise be. <laughs>
Xavier Jimenez Castillo. Chris Putricus. Scotty Pippen. So cool we have Scotty Pippen. Oh. Sarah Kemp. <laughs> Tobias Clark. Flemily. So cool we have Dungeon Cap. <laughs> I, Dungeon Kappa could totally be uh, Scotty Pippen in a one one <laughs> I'd love to see it. In the ice part of the ice, till melt, do us part. Oh, yes, the well, wedding. No, no, keep the ice going, guys. God damn it. <laughs> Jen, you just got to wait until they say, does anyone have any reason why this ended? <laughs> oh, and then I just j- to jump in and yeah. I, yeah, I lower the, the temperature. It's fine, yeah. yeah. Zach Ware. Limp Duck. Jonas Blatterman. Meet Virginia. Alex Moon, the robotic dog. Estamina, Lord of Paul's Pants. Paul Grasso. Joe Regular Name Scott. Chris Handjob Ghost that came out the TV Nelson. <laughs> the lack of like a, a preposition in there <laughs> makes it way funnier. <laughs> came out the TV. Came out the TV. Streak. Kieran McNamara. Diet Soda. Lamb. Jackie L. Coleman Laguza. Luke Canoodles. A pair of Scots. Hugh Bolin. Zambambino. She Aring my L till I stop. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I like it. Levi Kidder. Get nasty while I chrome casty. Nice. David Gray. Jonas Enivoldson. Bryce Deary. Matthew Brittato. Some of Chad's bird friends agree with Kevin. Zalasta is fun. They love it. They love those dwarven <laughs> variations you can play They with. love those ugly, ugly dragon born creature <laughs> mans. <laughs> I gotta play Celasta. Ma, the meatloaf! Everyone must play Celasta, Joe Gorman. Since you changed the uh, Discord category, and now I have to play Celasta. <laughs> Nathan Remick. I just wanted to accurately show the impact that Celasta has had on the gaming industry. RPGs are now Celasta like. Yeah, Nathan Remick. Need more kimchi. Burgers, polyamorous, entity marriage. We're all getting married to the entity. You guys, the entity's not going to treat you right. I'm trying to hope you understand that. <laughs> Lee Wood. <laughs> Nicholas Maloney. Andre Villanueva. Eric Horowitz. Tiffany Leah. Reed Steubendeek. Thomas Jancis. Lucretia McEvil. Mutant Astronaut. Joey Evans. Henry Torbear. Carewise Gamgee. Boner Guard Epsilon Hamilton, a.k.a. Hambone, host of Radio Bonaire. Adam Knapp. A wild swaggy yellow squire appears. Cameron Hansen. Logan Derby. Brad Schmelzer. Chick. Generally depressing. The Deadly Bulb. Ben Bohan. Callum Mr. Misfire West. Mandy Nasty. Yoplin. Now that Goosebuds is on TikTok, will you keep a little dirt under your pillow for the dirt man? I understand that reference because I'm on TikTok. Yeah, that's a catchy little song. Yeah. I don't I don't know what that means. It's a, it's a little guy put a little dirt on your pillow for the dirt man. That's all that's all it is. Okay. That's a cute little song. Goosebuds on TikTok, check us out. Philip Reynolds. Sonic is the perfect artistic creation. Chad Kwan. Yeah, I stand by that. Nate Bit G. Calamity Carl. Germ Juice. Ryan R. Davis. Scott Wable. Nick Johnson. Tacky Tammy. Boss Gerritsen. Ev Dog. Ryan Carroll. Megan McCormick Mason. Llama Lad. Greg Musto. Ninja Bread Men. Dr. Diarrhea. Hello to Kiss Frenchlin. I love that one. It's always so fun to say. Yeah. Aaron Lord. Dr. Chocula. Hi, first time, long time. Sprinkle Buns. Robot Arena. SSJ Trogador. Ollie Suds. My Cart. My, it's my Cart. My Cart. Cassandra Harris. Gulliver. Mike Spaghetti Jones. Max Boltzmann. Big Nick Lane. Kira and Brian are big fans. Big Corner. I love Big Corner, man. Uh, feels like I'm just kind of coming in someplace safe. <laughs> Blake, no longer having a bad time. Kevin. Dan Antonio. Oh. That's great. Farrah. Eh. Paul Schindler Dano is a butter chicken freak. Is that is he, is that calling Paul Dano a shitty Riddler? Is that what Schindler is saying? I don't know, but I'm scared. And Schindler is lowercase, so it's very casual. Yeah, I know. It, yeah, oh, it's a spooky word. I'm also a butter chicken freak because butter chicken's delicious. So, are you just like are you just putting like butter on like a roasted chicken? Is that all you're doing? No, that's it's a very very spicy Indian food that. Oh, no thank you then, if it's spicy, no thank you. Yeah, it's uh, it's incredibly spicy. Quest! Postmaster! Red Baron! Chris Curdo. Cole Gleason. Because, like, you'd think with a name like Butter Chicken, it would be a more mild yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's got a more of a base taste to it. It's got a dairy, heavy dairy base. Not the case at all. Soggy no newspapers. A little spicy for old Chad. Chris Kulik. Dakota Kemp. John W. Jesse Boggs. Michael Malloy. Kyle O'Neill. Saturn Video. Time eats flesh. It does. <laughs> yep. Kiwi of Lerve. Anthony Stoker. 
Brody underscore Danza. Tan Your Hide wants more pretend friends and Goosebuds RPG. Maybe you will have your wish. Maybe. Maybe. Wonderskin. Thank you, Tan Your Hide, for wanting things. Max is a strong dog <laughs> in the prime of life. Oh, I love. I, I love. I, Max, I, I hope you never die. <laughs> the prime. Yeah, Wonderskin again. Thank you, Wonderskin. Still force, force of the future, all in PHs. <laughs> it's a strange Disney TV movie. <laughs> Kit Bush. Seriously. Skeet Door. <sighs> A.K.A. Cyberbully. <laughs> Dennis Wright. Jover the Moon. Cameron Ganzevel. Blarbin. Paul was a fool. Kevin has my loyalty. Yes. Where's your Paul now? <laughs> <laughs> Rat IRL. Logan Kilgis. Creature of the Office, Bosferatu. Starship Nine. Matt Septor. Greg and his Gregorian chanting army of metal monks pledge their shred to Kevin. Thank you for the pledges. Pretty sick. I haven't gotten a pledge in a while, I'm just gonna say. B I don't wanna ask about I don't I don't wanna ask for it. I just I, I just wanna know. You got bird friends. You have constant bird friends. Yeah, but then people keep assigning my bird friends other things. <laughs> It's true. Where's where's Chad's piece of the pie? Where's his slice of the book? Jeff, big baby, and his wife, not a big baby. Odin's underscore eyehole underscore. Yes. Oh, man, I can't wait. So, Turaku, the (laughs) thing that goes doink in the anime, I embarrassed myself in a meeting (laughs) this last week. We were referencing (laughs) the thing that goes doink in the anime. What's that wooden thing with the water? And I had forgotten that your name didn't start as this. I was like, oh, obviously Turaku is the name for that. <laughs> yeah, that thing, the thing like, that goes doing it is it, called a Turaku. Yeah, the thing that goes doing it is called a Turaku. And I said it in a meeting and everyone's like, wow, I didn't know that. Chad, it's impressive. I was like, yeah, it's totally Turaku. Take a note down. It's not. Wow. It's definitely not. Wow. I, I, I look like a fucking fool. The Book of Names has far reaching consequences on our careers and lives. Yeah, you changed my education. Thank you, Turaku. Grab bombics. <laughs> Problem Child 2 on DVD. Spencer, why? The Strays. Elodie. Hey, Pelican. Capybaras are friends, not food. Wow. Clint Deerkin. I feel specific. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't talk over Clint Deerkin. It's fine. Clint Deerkin. Ages Biscatonic. Bale 7. Edgar Crassus. 3 a.m. sleep. Trying to get some of that. Ben Flojo Sire. Angelo Edward Longton Santone. Smelodies. Bob Cabbage. Spencer Leith Johnston. JFAR enjoyed this episode, especially that one part with the thing. I did too. Thanks, I like the thing. Jolly old jewels. Number one gnome. Caleb Snyder summons a skeleton with sunglasses. Whoa! Whoa. Can't copyright that. Do you think skeletons can just look at the sun as long as they want? Fuck, they probably can. Unless they're the rare skeletons with eyeballs. But no, you probably still can. Yeah, probably still can. Really makes you think. Really makes you think. (laughs) The Shreknomicon. (laughs) Nowhere, Lucas. Lumo Nuva. Ryan Udaf. Geege. A refreshing tall glass of extra dumb bitch juice. Good emphasis. Klomps. MC Wright. Taylor Groffalo. CL Reagan is a new holder of the Book of Names. Thank you. Well, now I want to clarify. Yeah, thank you. CL Reagan said, says they're the holder. You don't hold the Book of Names. Like, it is... It's more of an ethereal floating book that we hover around with our pens. Well, I don't hold um, it. CL Reagan holds it. He's the holder okay. of the book. Okay. All he's, right. Okay, CL Reagan. He's always, he's always holding it. It's a lot of responsibility, CL. Hope you're ready. Okay. It's a heavy one. <laughs> okay. Okay. Justin. Nintendo 60 jorts. Daniel Hirschberger. Take ass bitties 007. Crazy ass nipples. I love that that corner. I love big ass titties <laughs> crazy ass nipples. It's a lot. Jaybird. Adam G. Uh, Mimal the Delph, and we finally we finally have canon what Delph means. Damn. Elf lad fuckable. <laughs> Treehouse of Jorge. <laughs> this is this is a season finale of Goosebumps. <laughs> we finally know the name. <laughs> finally. Oh, it all makes sense. Jim Corey. Jackie Bay. Matt Noah. This Yeti pledges his spaghetti to Lord Kevinetti. Hey, thanks, Yeti. It's pretty good. We got multiple spaghetti. We got multiple uh, pledges. I'm so ready to go to war. Carly Beth's parents, 808. <laughs> Bit beasts are your Beyblade stand guys. How do you not remember 90s anime minutia? Whew, Toten Watson. I, th- I understand I understood most of that. I, I went to a place in my brain. <laughs> Wyvern. Daniel Lavelle. Quinn. Shelly Castillo Garcia. 
like a multiple Castillas. Angus Keith. Big old dumb burb playing Celasta at Ice Church. Celasta. Yeah. We are, Goose Buds is now half of the Celasta player base with six of us. <laughs> you go to Steam and it's every, yeah, 12 players. All, all us on different accounts. Felix. Cameron Murphy. Lee Murphy. Murphy Corner. I, I, my, my name was Murphy before I was Robocop. <laughs> Steamed ham. Jack H. Nathan Galindo. Mitchell Showalter. Are you related to Michael Showalter? I love your work. Whoa. Patrick Nielsen. Wolf CIA is aware of the entity below the ice. Oh, shit. Are they going to bust up this wedding? I'm going to. I, I am going to stand my ground with booby traps to stop the CIA. <laughs> oh, I do. We'll, we'll get through the names, but I do have a final note on booby traps. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. J. Fen Crane. Damon the Demon. Oh, and welcome. Uh, mm, and welcome. New book of names, names. Ari. <laughs> and welcome, Eric. Welcome, Andrew. And welcome, Kyle Koliba. Thank you all so very much for your love and support. Thank you for joining the Book of Names. Okay, so Chad. Uh, yes. Th- I, the reason why you can't have a booby trap in your home is mm-hmm. because uh, if your booby trap goes off, you are not defending your life with it. You're defending your property with deadly force. Mm. You're not allowed to. You're, al- you're allowed to defend your life with deadly force. You're not allowed to defend your property with deadly force. So if you're far away and the booby trap goes off, you are not defending your life. But if I'm in front, if I'm behind the booby trap, like stop, d- stay away from me. Don't step on that platform in front of you. A-, a big spike's gonna come out. That's okay. I think it gets murkier from there, but you might still be in trouble as your lawyer. I'm willing to take it to the Supreme Court. Okay. Okay, thank you all so very much. Goodbye. Okay, goodbye.